and welcome back to another Blender tutorial video. In today's video, I'll be showing you how to make this fluid slash uh, wine glass splash animation. So as always, let's get straight into it. So what you want, what you want to do first is press X and delete the default cube. Then press Shift A. Insert in a cylinder. For now, let's drag that down. Press Shift A. Insert in a UV sphere. We're going to set off with making the wine glass first, so press tab, go into x-ray mode, or wireframe mode, click on one of these. On top, we're going to basically split this in half to make the bowl for our wine glass. So press B for border select. Select all the top vertices, cut this in half. Maybe let's select maybe another half of the bottom. Here we go, press X, delete faces tab and go back into solid mode control z we bring it on the z axis then let's start making or maybe let's start fixing the bottom a little bit make this a little more flat so press tab go into vertice select select press v to border select all of these vertices on the bottom let's make this a little more flat by bringing it up on the z axis just ever so slightly that seems to be good press tab let's let's move on to our cylinder now uh, press 1 to go into orthographic view zoom down tab on this scale it down a little press press pressing yes s z scale it on the z axis Maybe it's a little too tall this is you just play around with it until you feel the scaling is right. Press tab, get out of that. Move the move the up, both of these up. Go back to the graphic view by pressing one to adjust your view. If as needed. And just try to align these basically. To make this look a little more better in the transition, let's uh, scale this down first to make this uh, match the scaling for the glass. Press 1 to go into orthographic view. Press tab. What you want to do here is select the top vertices, so, or the top face. Go to face, select that. Extrude this out and scale it. So we have a little bit of a transition to the cup. Tab to get out of that, and we'll try to match this up. Just about there. Press tab. We might want to make a loop cut here to like thin this middle part out. So go over here, go to loop cut. Do that. Go back to your mouse. Press S to scale this down a little. Go back to face select, click on the bottom, maybe scale that up. E to extrude a little down and scale. Maybe that's a little too much. Scale that down, back down a little. And then you want to press E to extrude one more time to give it a little bit of a base. Press tab and see, as you can see, these two things are disconnected. What we want to do is to connect both of these two items. So you want to click on one item, press Shift, then Control J to join these two objects together. Then what you want to do is go over here to the ver uh, vertex groups, go to Normals, click on Auto Smooth. This is going to help since we're going to make this entirely out of glass. We won't get bits of shading on the bottom when, when we render this out. So next, what we want to do is make the last texture. So go to Materials, click on New. Make this go all the way white, up top, even the subsurface. Bring the reference ref roughness all the way down, and the transmission all the way up. And you want to go over here and go into the Cycles Render Engine, since we'll be using that for realistic purposes. And if you have a compatible GPU, set that to GPU Compute. Turn down Light Pass for a faster render. 
press simplify, and adjust your performance. Since I'm going with um, CPU and GPU, I'm going 32 and 32 for the tile size. Okay, let's line this up a little. Adjust your camera by maybe zoom out a little. Control Alt Zero, go to the camera, make this 30 millimeters for a wider angle. I for some reason I keep doing 32. 30. There we go. G Z. Grab it down on X Z axis. And if you go into render mode now, you can't really see any. You can barely just barely see it's glass, but to, but to see that it's actually glass, you want to exit out of render mode. Shift A, insert in a plane underneath it, and scale that up. Now you can really see the reflections. So as you can tell, this is definitely glass. See, maybe you can see a bit of subdivisions in there. Maybe, maybe we should have subdivided that more. I'll press tab. Go press tab. A, subdivide. Maybe two times. Z rendered. That didn't really make a difference, so it's fine if you don't do that. Well, anyway, Z solid. We now have our line glass. So let's just get into the fluid animation itself. So what you want to do is press Shift A, insert in a cube, scale it down, bring it up. Let's go maybe to press F3 or space or whatever you have to bring up this menu over here. Typically you'd go to edit, then operator search, type in quick fluid, and then it's going to set up the domain, pre-applied domain and settings for us. And what we're going to do is go into the physics tab and first of all you want to bake it. Actually, no, before you bake it, you want to click on the cup itself, insert a fluid physics, you know, physics for fluid, type it, put in it as a obstacle, and put it as a shell. What you want to do next, just to see if every, everything is working, is just bake the animation out. This might take a while, or fairly quick, depending on how fast your computer is. Okay, so once your bake is finished, you want to play the animation and see how it looks. Oops, we forgot to extend the domain. As you can see, it didn't fall all the way down because I forgot to extend the domain. So what you want to do is just scale the domain up and rebake it. This shouldn't take that long. Press play. As you can see, it's a bit freaking out. It's because that's because we don't have that many, that much of a resolution. To get a better uh, final result, what you, what you want to do is, first of all, let's actually color the domain so it looks like wine. So you want to make this like a deep red color if you want that. I'll keep mine a little bit of a lighter color. As you can see, you get the preview right there. So you want to click back on here. Go to the physics, the actual domain, and you want to increase the final resolution to maybe something like 100. And your preview to 100 if you have a powerful enough computer. If you don't, you should just render it out. As you can see, the more uh, subdivisions that we have, or final resolution increase that we have, the more memory it requires. As you can see, if you go from 100, maybe like something like 200, which is a bit much. This increases from 33 megabytes to like 268. Keep in mind this, that, that this can also take a fairly long time if you set this final resolution to a very high amount. For me, I have a fairly powerful computer, so I'm not too worried about this. But if your computer is on the lower end, uh, keep in mind that you shouldn't increase this too much.
Okay, so once that bakes out, you want to click play and see how it is. And it's starting to look fairly less blobby and squarey. It still needs a lot more subdivisions though. For me, I'm just gonna set mine to something like 300 and just let it go. Uh, as you can see, this dramatically increases the baked required memory. Just keep that in mind that you have enough storage or that you can uh, place this bake into. What you can what you can also do is for the bottom, you can actually add a texture and maybe I make it blue, red, or whatever background you want. Or what you can do is click over here. If you go into the nodes, if you're experienced with the nodes, I have a little more experience with it, you can add an image, like a wood image, or whatever table, whatever you want. See if you go over here. If you have a lot more samples, it'll look a lot better. Uh, and if you have the, if you have Blender 2.81 instead of Blender 2.8, you can obviously go into the compositing and you won't need as many samples if you're going to use a denoise node and if you want to do that you want you can go if you don't know how to do that you can go take a look on my tips and tricks tutorial i'll link that in the description below and if you set up your render settings as you go over here into render you want to change this to an output and name it go to FF, after you do that you want to go down here change this from png to ffmpeg video RGB encoding to MPEG-4, this to high quality, and this to real time. And then once you bake this animation at a higher sample rate, or I mean subdivision resolution rate, it'll take a while, but once you get there, it should uh, look like a more fluid or realistic animation. Uh, I'll display that on the screen in editing, so you can see at the end. Well, anyway, if you like the video, hit that like button. If you dislike the video, hit that dislike button. And if you like my videos in general, don't be afraid to hit that subscribe button. I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.